Right, so this is the last gather, Johnny. So, um, getting old now. This is about the biggest I really want to bother making. So this is going to be a large, heavy Somerset bowl. It's um, Star Wars day today. But we're looking forward, instead of Star Wars, we're looking forward to Somerset day, which is May the 11th. It's a massive day in the calendar in Somerset. What you'll find is all the pubs are selling free cider. There's free pasties, that's Cornwall, isn't it, everywhere? Um, Johnny's blowing naked on May the 11th, which is probably a reason not to come. Anyway, lots of things going on. So, here's the colour going on. So this colour's going to go, the green goes on the base. And this is a special, we're doing two greens. So we've got a lime green on top of a dark green. And then over here, we're going to do two blues. So we've got, this is a, a light blue, although it looks reasonably mid bluish there. So that's going on the top. And then on top of that, we're going to put this um, sky blue. So as you look at that closely, you get a texture very much like a mottled sky, which is what we're looking for. And then back over here, we're going to go back on the green. So we've got two distinct colour bands, green and blue. And this, this range really was sort of spawned from the levels and the reeds on the levels. Right, Johnny, can you open the door, please, for me? So we just need to open one door on the glory hole to get this piece in. So we've got to heat this layer of colour in, and we're going to do all that again so we get a, a bit of a thicker layer of colour on. We really like the effect powders and chips give you on the surface of glass as against using a, a block case colour. So I'm going to get Johnny to move the marver over there a little bit and fluff the colour up for me, so you have to bear with him while he wanders over there to do this. You ready? Tell me which one you're doing first, the green. OK, then I'm going to do the green now. And if you can fluff the blue up as well, please. I thought you'd stop videoing for a minute, but maybe you haven't. No. Right, so what we're just going to do is, as you roll the glass through it, it obviously flattens the colour out. So just fluff it up a little bit, and you get a nice even layer going back on. And again, back on the blue at the back, and then back on the, the light blue above it. And if you look very closely, you can see that colour at the front is slightly more crystalline, which is what we like. And then back over here on the green. And the lime. So we've basically now got all our base colour. So we've got to heat all that over. And if we look over here on the other marble, we've got our pattern. So this is an abstract pattern to symbolise the reeds and the um, banks of the river and the reeds around here. Well, especially, this was particularly the picture they're taking from a, a reen, which is the Somerset word for a ditch. Sounds very romantic, doesn't it? But I happen to really like reeds and ditches. And they're always full of wildlife. So I'm now going to try and get this colour in a line. And you can see the going on there nice and evenly. I quite like it to be a little bit random, so I go backwards and forwards over it. Not really interested in it meeting up or being even, because the landscape is never even when you look at it. It's never perfect. Right, so I'm just marvelling it now. So I'm it's just making... Rusty. The marvel's rusty because actually we keep spraying it with water and tomato ketchup. So right, back over here to the glory hole. So I've now got to heat all that in. So, so far, this is almost a solid bit of glass. The bubble inside is about the size of a satsuma. 
So I'm going to turn the iron in both directions. If I turn it in one direction, I'll get the pattern will start to, to swirl. So I'm trying to keep the, the colours and the pattern quite vertical on the piece. So making sure I go in both directions. So I'm going to heat it all in. So what you do is, you, uh, I do, at this point, I'm getting as hot as I can do without losing control of it. So I've got to keep the piece up or it'll get too long. Back to my chair. Pick up my paper, which seemed to have disappeared down there. And now I've just got to get this back on centre. So all the time, you've got to try and keep the glass as on centre as you can do. So I'm now going to blow it a little bit. So I'm going to blow, <coughs> put my thumb over the end, so my thumb's over the end, and what happens is that the air expands as it gets hot, and you can just see the piece getting wider there at the top in the blue. I can see the bubble. Anyone you can see the bubble? <coughs> so I've now, I can tell you because I can just see it, the bubble is about to the middle of the piece. Bubbles about to there. So I'm going to heat it up again. I'm going to neck it in, which means I'm going to put a cut line around. Can I have a door open, Johnny, please? 